Springs U.S. Women's Open, presented by the brands of Ebonite International. Hi, my name is Del Warren. I'm the Vice President of the Kegel Training Center, and I'm here today with uh, two ladies that uh, I think everyone knows in the bowling community. Two-time uh, United States Open winners, uh, Kelly Kulik and Liz Johnson. And uh, we're happy to be here to uh, talk about the 2011 BPA United States Open, um, particularly some information that's going to help everyone bowl better this year. Okay? So the first category we want to go into is pattern length something that I think Kegel knows a lot about and uh, when we look at the pattern that's going to be for the United States Open this this pattern with the help of, of Kegel through BPAA was designed by the folks at the Kegel Training Center and Kegel um, with versatility in mind um, they really want uh, the participants this year to all have a, a great look at the pocket they want all styles to be able to play fairly and they're, they're looking for a very successful tournament so First thing that we like to look at in pattern is pattern length. This particular pattern is 39 feet. Now, uh, in Kegel terms, that's a, a medium length pattern. Um, they chose this pattern uh, medium because, again, it's, it's, it's a type of length that, um, that specifically women like to play around the second arrow. This is where this particular pattern sets up. Uh, a medium pattern allows different styles to play, different parts of the lane. And this particular pattern at 39 feet uh, tends to lend itself to a lot of different styles, um, ball speeds, uh, rev rates, etc. So we get a variety uh, of looks on this particular pattern. Um, girls at 39 feet, uh, a medium pattern. Uh, what are some of the tactics that, uh, that you use on 39 feet and, and what did you see this morning? Well, Del, like you said, it's 39 feet. It allows for multiple angles to the pocket. Now, me being a little bit of a higher rev rate player, I tend to attack the lanes using deeper angles. I was able to play in my comfort zone, which is normally around the third arrow, find the path to the pocket and be consistent. But I also had the means of using different equipment to play multiple angles further outside or inside to still get me to that pocket and hopefully my carry percentage would be high. So you, you felt like you could play your A game? I did. The entire time from, from beginning to as I bowled on lanes for a long period of time, I was able to start out the gate with my A game. Great. Liz? Now, uh, I was able to, I felt like I was able to use my aim also. Uh, I have a little more speed, a little more up the back of the ball, and uh, I was able, probably between the first and second arrow, and with using some uh, medium to strong balls, and uh, and then as the lane started to break down, uh, either go to a weaker ball or go a little bit deeper uh, inside the, the track area, inside the uh, second arrow. That's interesting. Both of you uh, were able to get in a position where you felt both felt comfortable. You could play your A game, which you normally like to do. And, and again, at uh, that medium length, that's a, that's a nice length where uh, it does allow many different styles to play. And uh, that's really kind of the goal here is, as we, as we move forward. And you're going to hear that that's going to be the, the general theme. And I think our audience who's looking to participate at, uh, to start at the regional level I think that's important for them to know that they're going to have several options uh, when they go to their site and bowl on this particular pattern. Uh, the second category when you're looking at pattern is volume. Um, they chose uh, uh, a particular volume of 23.28 mils, which on a scale is kind of a medium amount of oil. Um, medium length pattern, medium amount of oil. Um, again, uh, that usually equals friction, response, uh, a fair amount of hook. Is, is uh, Kelly, is that what you saw? Yes, those are exactly the characteristics I saw. Um, the volume did dictate a lot of length down the lane, but as soon as the pattern came to an end, you could see where the friction was and how quickly the ball responded to it. So it, again, it will create that variety for all the players to use their, their use of angles for themselves with their ball style and their game. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Liz? The, I saw the, the uh, you know, on, on the fresh, I saw the, the back end uh, had kind of a slightly stronger back end. And as the oil started to carry down, my angles kind of tightened up a little bit, and I was able to go a little more up the back, maybe a little uh, uh, tighter angle through the front, and actually uh, migrated a little bit more right. So as you can see with the, the medium length pattern, uh, medium amount of uh, oil on the lane, both girls had plenty of hook, uh, plenty of friction, and a very defined break point that allowed them to play their A game. So uh, the third category is something pretty interesting and a little bit different for this term is the shape of the pattern. 
Usually the shape is determined by the ratio or the amount of oil in the, in the middle part of the lane versus the amount of oil in the outside part of the lane. And in sport bowling, uh, which uh, most people have heard of, um, the ratio, the, the rule is three to one. This particular pattern uh, is 5.21 to ratio. And uh, what that really means is sport bowling is three to one. Uh, at 5.2 to one, that means the pocket's gonna be a little bit easier to hit. Uh, than what you find on sport bowling, but will certainly be a little more difficult than a house shot. And uh, um, is that what you guys found out when you started bowling? Did, was it fairly easy to find the pocket? I think so. I mean, I was able to hit the pocket over and over again, maybe not carry every shot, but absolutely. The shape that I like to see as the ball is traveling down that lane is, is a nice, smooth curve as it's traveling down its path. And, and the oil, the amount of volume, the shape it was gave me that definition of what I like to see. It also allowed for me to miss a little bit outward and the ball would still boom back. And if I tugged it inside a little bit, the ball still held on its path. Sound like you had a pretty good ball reaction. I, yeah, I, well, with our equipment, I always have good ball reaction. That's good. Liz? Um, where I was, where I started to play right around the second arrow, just, just right of the second arrow, uh, just saw that shape angle through the pocket. Uh, then uh, as, as the carry down uh, continued, uh, just setting the ball a little bit to the right, I was able to get a little more recovery. And, and if I missed a little left, just maybe inside of the track area, right around 10, 12 or so, uh, it was a little more forgiving also. So there's that little, little shape that I had a little area to play with. Well, that's good. Um, both of you have kind of confirmed everything that, that we've described. And as I watch the pattern, uh, watch you guys bowl today, uh, here and at Kegel, um, we saw the exact same characteristics on the two lane surfaces here and also at the Kegel Training Center. Um, which leads me to the last uh, category that we're going to talk about, which is surfaces. Uh, for the venue that the championships will actually be held at, uh, the surface of the lane is HPL 9000, AMF HPL 9000. And that's a synthetic surface. It's a texture surface. So as synthetics go, uh, this particular surface is known for having a little more friction. Um, they have SPLs in, in this particular training center which is very similar to HPLs, and uh, you had a chance to throw on that particular surface. Kelly, uh, did, is that what you saw? Did you see a lot of friction? I did. The advantage of being in this training facility is to have both surfaces available to us. Um, the HPL, which we saw and which I bowled on today, definitely, like you said, had high friction. So it made my ball respond to the end of the pattern much quicker. I did see a more defined shape to where it got to the end and made a definite left, left change. Um, when I bowled on the other type of surfaces, the pro handling, it was much harder. The ball, it almost made as if the pattern was longer. And um, I was able to use the same equipment on both lanes. But on the pro handling, I was able to play a little bit further outside towards the track area because of the tightness of the oil down the lane. So when you say track area, what part of the lane are you talking about? Track area most often common is, is second arrow or ten area, right around there, where Liz's comfort zone is. So it allowed me to... Uh, to play closer to that track area on the pro ambling, whereas the HPL surface, I had to be further inside of it and use it as a bank shot almost, or as a hook shot to get to the pocket. So she had to move quite a bit on the two surfaces. Is that Did you have to move quite a bit? Um, I, I believe on the, the HPL, I moved a little bit more. Yeah, there was, a, there was definitely a little bit more. Um, on the HPL, there was a little more friction, so I had to open my ankles up just a little bit for me. A uh, little, little bigger move, not a lot, but uh, and then the, the pro avalanche, I was a little tighter surface, so I was able to go a little more, move my feet a little further right and go up the back of a little bit more, play a little lot tighter angle. Were both of you able to throw the same equipment? I was. The only difference was a question of two or three boards inward with my feet. Okay. I, I do the same ball also. Okay, so you just. A couple, a couple boards. So you just made a, a, a normal move like you would learn uh, when you begin bowling if the lanes are. A little bit tired, you maybe move a little bit to the right. If they're hooking a little more, you move to the left. Is that mm -hmm. kind of what you saw? Pretty much. I think on the, the pro ambling too, I was if I needed to add surface to the equipment, I would be able to do so and still see this type of shape that I want to see. I was about where I either changed like a hand position or uh, looked a little closer or further down the lane uh, just with my eyes. Well, it's great. Um, you know, some of the other surfaces that the, the bowlers may encounter obviously is wood. There's still some wood centers out there, which would be probably the highest friction surface they would see, um, which means they would probably actually start a little bit deeper or they would start uh, with something a little bit weaker, or, uh, or even the straighter players would still be able to play out where uh, Liz described where she was playing, or 
um, even older synthetics um, where uh, the, the track area is pretty worn where uh, the ball will start to lose ball speed a little bit sooner but either way um, we're giving you a starting position here we're talking about generalities um, you're going to need to read your ball reaction and, and to uh, manage things based on the bowling center that they qualify in and so uh, uh, these are the, the four categories that are really going to determine the decisions that the bowlers make and uh, last but not least um, as far as the starting position we use a formula at the Kegel Training Center uh, based on some information that the United States Bowling Congress did in 2006 um, to how to locate where your ball needs to be at the end of any given pattern. And it's based on mathematics and uh, some equations and we find that using a formula called pattern length minus 31 um, gives you uh, an area of the lane that's usually pretty consistent and allows you to play on most patterns. And uh, so because this pattern is 39 feet, uh, that means that really your ball needs to be somewhere around board eight and in consulting with uh, John Janowitz, the, the current amateur player of the year and uh, three-time Team USA -er, and uh, I believe John's um, uh, got two Eagles as well uh, and he's also one of the best lane technicians in the world uh, so it's nice talking to somebody that, that actually had input to this pattern and he's a, he's a fine bowler himself. Um, he said the exit point on this pattern is going to be somewhere between the seven board and the eleven board at 39 feet so that gives everyone a four board window, uh, which again allows for multiple styles. And based on uh, watching you guys bowl today and, uh, and uh, talking to you a little bit more about it, that's pretty consistent with what uh, you were seeing. Um, the only difference is was your launch angles. You were obviously a little bit deeper because um, you have more hand, your ball speed's a little bit slower, and you're a little bit further to the right. But both their bowling balls were exiting somewhere between that seven board and 11 board area down the lane. So uh, hopefully this gives everyone some comfort um, of information to a starting game plan when they go to the tournament so that they can get in the right part of the lane, get comfortable, and score well. Hi, I'm Kelly Kulik, 2010 U.S. Open Women's Champion. I invite you ladies to come on out and sharpen your skills and learn about the game of bowling. You will be entitled to work with some of the best coaches there is in the sport of bowling. If you're looking to sharpen your skills, learn about the U.S. Open pattern, and someday be a future competitor in this event, I encourage you to come out, put on your shoes, tie them up, and give it a go. You too can bowl to win. Bowling's U.S. Women's Open, presented by the brands of Ebonite International.